Ever wondered if the cameras in our phones are beginning to exceed the cameras in our cameras? What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So recently since my journey on YouTube, I've been wondering about how to maximize the quality of my content, which led me to this simple question. Is the video quality on my iPhone 14 Pro Max better than the quality on my Canon M50 Mark II? So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the cameras on the iPhone 14 and the Canon M50, and we're gonna be comparing them to see which one has the better quality for content creation. Before we get into any comparison videos, let's run through the settings that I've got on both of these cameras. So in my iPhone camera settings in the record video tab, I'm currently recording in 1080p at 30 frames per second. And then I pretty much have every other setting turned off other than the enhanced stabilization feature, which is on to try and reduce any screen shake we might get in the footage. Now it is worth noting that the Canon M50 Mark II does not have any in-body image stabilization features, but I do wanna highlight some of the benefits that the iPhone 14 does have over the Canon M50. Here are my slow-mo settings, but since I won't be going into that too much in this video, we will skip over these for now. Record cinematic is set to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Everything else is set to default other than turning on the grid and level, which can actually be really helpful if you're trying to line up that perfect shot. Moving on to the Canon settings, we have the shooting mode set to manual, the recording quality set to 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. The white balance mode is set to daylight as we're currently shooting in daylight. Now, the picture I have set to standard, I usually use the flat color profile cine style when recording on the M50 since it doesn't support F-Log and I like to have full control over the colors when I'm making my edits. However, since the Apple ProRes format takes up so much space, we'll be leaving F-Log out of this review. If any of you guys do wanna download this cine style color profile, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, since my FPS is 30 frames per second, we wanna be implementing the 180 degree rule, which in the most basic form means whatever your frames per second, you wanna double that number for your shutter speed. So for example, if I'm shooting in 30 FPS, I would want my shutter speed to be one of a 60th as this is double. Now, this isn't a necessity. You can play around with your settings, but this has just become a standard rule that most filmmakers seem to follow. Now I'm also running the stock 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens that comes with the Canon M50 and I have my f-stop set to the lowest at 3.5. I also have my ISO set to around 400. Now that we have the technical information out of the way, let's try and capture some footage with both of these cameras and see what they look like side by side. Now, the only difference between the settings on these cameras is that the iPhone is recording at 4K at 60 frames per second, while the Canon, although equipped with 4K, pretty much disables autofocus and introduces an undesirable crop to the image, so it's currently set to 1080p. The iPhone clearly showcases effective image stabilization, resulting in smooth and crisp video, while the Canon lacking image stabilization produces more shakier footage. Despite this, the Canon does excel in creating a better depth of field and enhancing color richness, providing a more cinematic feel to the overall image. Now another big topic to discuss are the system's autofocus capabilities. Apple iPhones are known for having fast and accurate autofocus systems. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is no exception as it uses latest technologies such as phase detection pixels and advanced autofocus software. This makes it generally reliable for both photos and videos, capturing subjects quickly and accurately. The Canon M50 also features a capable autofocus system, particularly for a mirrorless camera. It features dual pixel CMOS AF, which is known for providing smooth and precise autofocus, especially during video recording, and you can slightly see the difference between them. The Canon looks softer and smoother when focusing, whereas the iPhone looks sharper and snappier, which really just boils down to preference. Now, in terms of the color science behind these devices, Apple is known for its sophisticated color processing algorithms, often delivering images with a more vibrant and true-to-life look to them. Now, the good thing about this is that true-to-life colors often appeal to a more broad audience range, meaning you're more likely to leave your viewers satisfied with your content. Now, Canon does have a long-standing reputation for its color science, often described as warm and pleasing. This once again gives viewers a more cinematic or traditional experience, which is appreciated by many photographers and filmmakers. Some users may prefer the vibrant and punchy colors often associated with iPhones, while others may lean towards the more subdued and natural tones produced by Canon cameras, leaving this once again down to preference. The final thing I wanna mention is the price of these items and the value for money that you're getting. At the current time of recording this video, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is around £1,000 brand new for the 128GB version, but you can't exclude the fact that you're getting a smartphone as well as a camera for this price. The Canon M50 Mark II is currently going for around £700, so it's roughly £300 cheaper than the iPhone. However, you are getting exclusively a camera and nothing more. My personal opinion is that if you're coming up on maybe a new phone upgrade, try the 14 Pro Max. You're essentially getting two for one and it wouldn't hurt to try it out for creating content. Based off of this, 
I would say that the iPhone offers better value for your money. Now, after reviewing both of these cameras, I am honestly blown away with the capabilities of the iPhone 14. The fact that the iPhone even holds up against the mirrorless camera, let alone outperforms it in certain areas, is an achievement in itself. If you guys are genuinely looking to start creating content on YouTube or whatever platform of your choice, and you do have an iPhone with a decent camera, in my opinion, you should be using that to start. The quality on these cameras are getting better and better every single year and it makes them a super viable option for those of you wanting to get started on your journeys. Now, if on the other hand, you've already been using an iPhone and you are wanting to level up the quality of your content, maybe by having different lenses for different scenarios, or you just want more control over the color correction in your videos, then purchasing a DSLR or a mirrorless camera is a valid option. Remember, it's not so much the camera you're using, it's more about the way that you use it. So just to simplify all of this, I think if you do already own an iPhone or something similar with a decent enough camera, I would would strongly suggest picking that up and using it. The more you use it, the more you'll start to realize what you do like about the camera and the things that you don't like as much. But overall, I think the iPhone is a perfect grab and go option these days for content creation. It pretty much does all of the work for you. If however, you are wanting to have more customizability in your content, such as using wide body lenses or super zoom lenses, or even just to have more color correction capabilities, then definitely picking yourself up a DSLR or a mirrorless camera would be a great option for you. But just remember, it's all about the type of content you're creating. If you're doing talking head videos such as this, as you can see the iPhone 14 works perfectly fine. But if you are wanting to create more cinematic shots, then taking a look at the DSLR or mirrorless options probably are a better option for you. Just be aware that this can become a very expensive addiction. Now that's pretty much it from me guys. I hope this video has helped guide some of you on your content creation journeys. If this video has helped you out, make sure you drop a like below. Also be sure to leave a comment and let me know what kind of videos you guys are interested in seeing in the future. But yeah, that's it from me guys thank you so much for watching take care and i'll catch you in the next one